Okay, good. So, who are you? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Jonathan Nightingale. I'm the Senior Director of Firefox Engineering here at Mozilla. Uh, and what I've got in front of me is a deconstructed Galaxy S2. Um, we took this from originally an Android phone. Um, we took Android off of it mm -hmm. and installed Boot to Gecko. I won't go into a lot of details about Boot to Gecko, but let's boot to Gecko. Sort of a terrible code name, isn't it? Right. So yeah, I asked Jonathan. Web, to, uh, <laughs> so let's see how fast it is. I asked you to do this just because it's mind-blowingly fast. Power. I never know how long to hold on this power button. Let Samsung come up. This is where normally you'd have swirling graphics and some. This is a concept, right? This was just announced. Yeah, this is just our, and, and we're done. Um, <laughs> it's so, already it's booted in about four <coughs> seconds. Right, exactly. And everything you're seeing here is the web, right? That's the right. big pitch with Moon to Gecko is that we look at a lot of the work that's happening with smartphones right now, and a lot of the apps that you're seeing on Android or iOS or wherever else are actually HTML5 under the covers anyhow. Mm -hmm. They're just being packaged up so that they can be sold in the various native app stores. Right. So we said, why don't we just build a phone that doesn't need that middle native layer that mm -hmm. just runs the web directly on the middle. So if I wake it up here. Yeah, and I everything we're seeing here is HTML5 as well. Yeah, I mean, there's the source code, right? <laughs> so you can view source on the launcher. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Um, so this is our dev device. We haven't done a lot of the hardware optimization that we can do yet, but you can see like standard launcher. Uh, we've got some apps pre-installed. Mm -hmm. The things you'd expect to see in a smartphone, so I can browse through my gallery of photos. Uh, I can do full motion video. We're not tapped can we into view source on this. Oh sure. All these apps have got view source. It's like yeah. just a standard button. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Now that's right, especially for the developer builds. We always right. want to be able to dive into that. That's sweet. Um, I wonder will extensions work on, on all the apps as well? In principle, there's no reason we can't build those APIs, but remember this is just this is just straight up web technology, so right. you can build anything you can build on the current web. Um, we have a browser, perhaps unsurprisingly. Uh, <laughs> you almost don't need one. Right, the, the device is a browser basically. Um, we've also got some novel stuff, so um, this one's a web page too, except this one can dial the phone. <laughs> The right. dialer is a web page. Exactly. And so uh, the SIM card in this has been flaky. But if it weren't, I can make phone calls. I can send text messages and things like that. And really, we had to build web-facing APIs for this stuff. But we're Mozilla. We've been building web-facing APIs for a decade. Right. So we look at the APIs that currently exist natively. We replicate them. And then we do the thing that we do. We move them out to standardization process. We try and get other engines to implement them as well. You know, we call it Boot to Gecko as an internal code name. Um, I'm just as happy seeing phones that are booting to other rendering engines. We're going to make a strong foot. We think Gecko is a high quality platform to build on, don't get me wrong. Right. But really what we want to do is bring the, the choice and innovation and creativity and easy tool sets of the web to smartphones. We don't think it needs to be locked into a particular platform. So yeah. that's why we do dialing, uh, SMS, you know, we've got uh, web pages running the camera now as well, mm -hmm. so you can take pictures. So you're just, using what what the web web RTC API or what? Well, no, this is just a camera specific API. Right. Although we're also obviously working on web RTC, which is sort of encompasses several pieces, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we're just burning down the list. You know, we haven't gotten them all yet. This is a development device, so we don't yeah. have NFC, for instance. We haven't built a web facing API for talking to the NFC chip. We will. Yeah. Right. It's just you're going to do them in order. You're going to dial the phone and take pictures with the phone before you're going to access the NFC reader. Right. Um, well, that's basically it in terms of the device, and then beyond that, it's uh, the other piece of the puzzle is building a market, yeah. right? Giving you a way to discover and, and install those apps. Okay. Um, we're building one of those. Uh, it's open for developer submissions this week, uh, okay. and it'll go out to customers later this year. Because the market itself is also something that works on other platforms like Android. Right? Absolutely, right. I mean, these are just web apps, and as yeah. I said, a lot of the apps you already get on native OSs are web apps under the covers. They're all HTML5, they're just in a wrapper. So what's the story for a developer who's already got an HTML5 out, app out there and they want to put that in the market and make some cash from it? Oh, just just come straight to the market side. As I say, we're open for developer submissions now, right? right. What's the URL? Uh, we'll find that. <laughs> we, we can add it on the post. What, what can they Google for? <laughs> if they just Google for uh, Mozilla Marketplace, okay. that's what we're calling it. And remember, like, we're not new to this. Um, Building an app store, that's that's new, that's exciting for us, but 
we've had a site distributing add-ons for Firefox for years, yeah. and that site gets hundreds of millions of users. Right. So um, we know how to do this. With scale. reviews and comments. With reviews and comments and discovery and featured add-ons, right? So moving to the marketplace is a big shift. It's a big growth of that work. Yeah. But it's building on stuff we already know how to do. And I want to mention this because I think it's important. Um, we're not trying to be the only store for HTML5 apps. Right. Uh, on a lot of these platforms, you're going through the OS vendor. That's the only way for you as an app author to talk to your users is through that store. And if you don't get approved, well, that's too bad. I mean, you'll notice there's no Firefox on an iPhone because right. the rules of the iPhone store say we can't do it. Um, we want to create a marketplace. We think it's going to be awesome. Uh, but we're also going to make all the technology available uh, to other people who want to build their own markets. We, we'd like those stores to work like stores in the real world. If you don't find the game you're looking for here, check out some other store. I'd love to see them differentiate and have stores that say, I'm focused on this particular type of app, or I'm uh, really proud of my review and curation processes. Like, and that, that's sort of been there on Android, but it's a little bit scary to use this, right? right? It's a little bit side though. Yeah, like you can yeah. do it, but... Um, so you, you're trying to build that at the core. Right, and I think that certainly when you see phones that are booting to the web, mm -hmm. you can expect to see that uh, featured front and center. It's the thing they need an app experience, they need a store experience. Right. Um, but even, as you mentioned, on platforms like Android, if you buy an app that's based on HTML5, why not carry it to your Android devices? Why not carry it to your desktop PC? Yeah. Like, you shouldn't have to rebuy it. It's one of the most painful things about owning multiple devices. That like, you buy some application for your iPad, you move over to your Android phone, you've got to buy it again. And, and the saddest thing for me is how similar the top ten lists are yeah. on each platform. Yeah, and everyone's paid for it and paid for it again. Exactly, and everybody's buying it. The only question I've had about that is it seems like the desktop apps sell for a lot more. So if someone wanted to buy it just for the mobile, instead of paying $2, they might end up paying $20. You know, if, if we make it easy, then sure, different app vendors are going to have different models for it, right? Mm -hmm. And when are you going to do ad supported? What are you going to do upfront? What are you going to do in app payments? And some of the app authors here have been asking us, what's your position on advertising in the apps? And we're like, well, we want to get out of the way. Like, I, I understand why other people want to control that experience. We certainly want to curate and review the apps that get submitted to the Mozilla Marketplace. Um, but we don't need to insert ourselves between apps and their users. We'd right. rather you guys have those conversations as directly as possible. And because it's the web, there's a lot of technology out there for you know gathering input and, and, and working with your customers, embedding content, right? So we don't have to invent that. We'd rather see the, the creativity we've seen on the web for the last decade figure out what the business models are. Right. And can I ask, it sort of relates to, in terms of getting out of the way and so on, this whole business with Path and so on lately, what's the permission model like for, for developers that You know, with? it's actually something that we're, we're still working on. We think there's certainly opportunity for improvement over like 74 permissions that you get prompted yeah. for once at install time. I mean, we've done a lot of this already. So when we introduced geolocation to desktop browsers a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. um, we had to figure out what the model was going to be for that. We said it was, it was a prompt on demand. So the first time you, you call out to that yeah. API, the browser asks you, are you okay sharing it? And if you want to say, yes, always share my location, great. But, but you made that decision on purpose. You didn't make that decision among 60 other decisions and your eyes sort of glazed over. Right? Now, it's, it's possible that some apps will end up asking for six things the first time you interact with them, and it's kind of unfortunate. But we actually think that doing this incrementally, involving the user in the process, it's got to be better for them. Uh, and it's, it's a model that we know has worked quite well on the web today. So right. there's, a, there's a lot of moving parts right now. You can grab the source on GitHub. You can play with it yourself. Um, we've got it loaded on an S2 because they have an unlockable boot loader, and so it's, it's easier for us to do that. Um, but we're always looking for help if people are interested in trying to hack it onto a new device, see how it works. OK. And just finally, um, I've heard from some of the other Mozilla guys that the actual hardware is potentially uh, it's got some a couple of benefits. Firstly, that it's based on open source specs, and secondly, that it's also just cheaper resources because of the HTML5 platform. So, can you talk about that and how cheap these devices might be? Yeah. Um, so, I'm sorry, my voice is going. That's right. It's day, from day three. Yeah. yeah um, so, one of the things that was really positive for us working with Telefonica, and our big announcement on Monday that we were working with them. Uh, 
is that they see this as an opportunity to produce a smartphone that's you know interactive, smooth, uh, high quality, um, with a good app selection for one tenth the cost of an iPhone. Wow. Uh, and and they can do that because we eliminated a whole layer of technology, right? We eliminated a whole layer uh, between the apps that already existed. And the so, so how is it that, because a lot of people would look at HTML5 running in browsers today and they think almost the opposite. They think it needs more than more resources than native apps. The web certainly scales. Um, you know, if you have more resources and can use them, we can, mm -hmm. we can get more creative. But, uh, but no, it, it turns out in practice that um, an engine running on, I mean, there is still an operating system on this, of course. There's a very thin Linux layer that's got some device drivers for talking to the hardware. But um, outside of that, it's just a web-based model. And the competition and innovation that's happened on the web in the last couple of years in terms of things like JavaScript speed, right, in terms of uh, hardware-accelerated graphics and things like WebGL for, for 3D content, has been monumental. I mean, three years ago, if we were coming to this show and saying, hey, you should, you should use the web to run your phones, um, people would have been right to point out that the web wasn't ready. Uh, the web's ready now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I said the last question, but I just remember one more that you reminded me of. Oh, Sorry, because I know I said this was just going to be a couple of minutes. We'll finish up. Um, just we, I was just talking to someone else about this. We were actually talking about the whole WebOS experience. And one of the really nice things that, that WebOS did early on was Node.js, right? So is there any kind of plan to do some sort of JavaScript-based service level API for this? It's an interesting question. I mean, I guess it depends. Um, on the demands of app authors, what they find they can't do in the current context. Um, answering that fully might take longer, but I guess the, the short answer is, at this point in the development of the, the technology, um, we're very keen to hear that these are the things that are needed, right? We, we want to hear from app developers. Mm -hmm. They're like, I, I love building for this, but I wish I could do X. Right. Um, because we'll, we'll set those up and knock them down. So what's the way? What's the way app developers can give you that kind of feedback? Well, you can. I mean, you can certainly find us online. We're, we're open source, right? So all the boot together stuff's being discussed in the news groups and in IRC. And mm -hmm. uh, as I say, there's the repos on GitHub, so you can grab a copy of it. You can send us pull requests. Is like, that the main URL? Just bootgecko.com. Uh, it's it's probably mozilla.org/png. Okay. Um, but certainly searching for boot gecko is yeah. going to get you there pretty quickly. Okay, great. I think that's it. That's all. Is there anything else you wanted to say? No, I think that covers it. Okay, excellent. Thanks very much. My pleasure.